Timeout 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.6, number 57. And here I was given the graph of a function and I was asked to write its equation. So let's take a look at the traits that I can see. I'm gonna use a different pen color. I'm gonna to go to green. So things I wanna take note of, I can see that I have a y-intercept at zero, one. I have a zero at three. It looks like I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling negative three and another vertical asymptote at x equaling four. And it looks like if I were to extend this end behavior here, it looks like I have a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. So let me write up what I have in terms of my traits, right? I knew I had a y-intercept at zero, one. I had an x-intercept at three, zero. And I had two vertical asymptotes. One was at negative three and one was at four. And then last but not least for my end behavior, in this case, I had the horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. And if you remember from the end behavior section, whenever you have the horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero, it means the degree in the numerator of your rational function is strictly less than the degree in your denominator. So with that, let's, let's go piece this together. Let's go make a function. So f of x, it's going to be some kind of rational function. All right, so I'm going to save the y-intercept until the end. Let me go with the x-intercept at 3, 0. So you find x-intercepts when you, your numerator, oops, let me erase that just a sec. Oh, erase too much. Okay, we highlight. And now let's go here. Okay, x-intercepts, they happen whenever your numerator only zeroes out, which means, oops, excuse me, that means I'm going to have a factor of x minus 3 in my numerator. And then on the flip of that, if I think about the vertical asymptotes at x equaling negative 3 and x equaling 4, vertical asymptotes occur when your denominator only zeroes out. So I know I'm going to have an x plus 3 down here and an x minus 4. All right? Now, holes would occur if both your numerator and denominator zeroed out at the same time, but we don't have that. Now, I can't forget that I have a stretch factor. We got that stretch factor of a. And if we look right now, if I'm just looking at my polynomial or my rational function, I, I just want to look at degrees. And let me again change pen colors here. So this numerator is degree one, right? And this denominator is degree two. Because if I were to multiply the x and the x, I would get an x squared. So we basically have an x over an x squared situation. And that sure enough corresponds to the degree in my numerator is less than the degree in my denominator. So since that's the case, I would have this horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. So things are falling into place, but I still haven't figured out the y-intercept being zero, one. And the fact that the y-intercept is zero, one, that's what's gonna help you solve for a. So what I'm about to do, and I will color code this yet again, is I'm gonna plug zero in for x in just a moment. All right, and then I'm gonna plug in one for y. Let's use, we'll go orange. I'll plug one in for y over here, and that will allow me to solve for my a value. All right, so let's try it. Let me switch pens. So if I clean up what I have a little, I have f of x equaling a times x minus 3, and then I've got x plus 3, x minus 4. All right, let's plug in 0, 1. So I'm going to plug 1 in here. This is going to be a times, oops, I don't know what that is. Okay, so let me undo a couple things. So I'm going to have 1 is equal to a times negative 3. And there's, I need a negative 3. There we go. And then down on the denominator, when x is 0, I get 3 times negative 4. So let's see what we have. It looks like the negatives are going to cancel and the 3s are going to cancel. So I have 1 equaling a over 4. Right? And if I multiply both sides of that equation by 4, I'm going to get that 4 is equal to a. Or really, a is equal to 4. So as I start to clean this up, you see me getting a equaling 4 down here. So I'm just going to put the 4 there. And, oh, I didn't write my final answer, so let me go ahead and do that. So ultimately, f of x would equal 4 times x minus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 4. And if you want to multiply that out, you're, you're more than welcome to. So what I mean by that is if you want to distribute and make this 4x minus 12 on the denominator and x squared minus x, minus 12, oh, I said this wrong, 4x minus 12 on the numerator and x squared minus x minus 12 on the denominator, that's fine. Either of these answers are totally acceptable. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.